Welcome, my chums, to the Cathedrals of the Deep. Cathedral of the Deep, there's only one of them. And more Dark Souls fun and games. So, let's get straight to it. We are going to head up towards the entrance to this godforsaken place, the home of Eldritch, one of the uh, Lords of Cinder. And they, of course, being the chappies who we're hunting in our little game. So there's a few things that we need to do around here. What we have is a few NPCs. I think we killed one of them last week. Oh, and I missed him entirely. Uh, okay. So we've got a bit of a gauntlet to run. Oh. To get to the first bonfire of the cathedral. There's this NPC guarding the way here. And then there's a bunch of hollows and some doggos through there. See if I can get you poisoned, boss. So he's going to throw throwing knives because he's just that kind of person. But it's okay because we've got a pointy poison stick that we can use to run him all the way through. So that's a nice little shortcut round to getting to him. And uh, if you can get the uh, the drop on him, then obviously you'll do more damage. And the good thing about the NPCs here is that they don't respawn. So once they're gone, they're gone for good. So obviously you've got a couple of different types of enemies in Dark Souls. Um, you have enemies that respawn when you rest at bonfires or when you die, and you have enemies that don't respawn when you rest at bonfires or die. Um, and the NPC type of enemies tend to be like that. They're the big gorgeous view. Look at that. So that is Lothric Castle over there. That was where we were all the way back in our first week. We've come a long way, folks. We've come all the way down through off the high wall, through the undead settlement, through the, down the road of sacrifices, and that, uh, I believe, is Farron Keep, which is a location that we'll be heading off to soon after we've dealt with. Cathedral of the Deep. So the Cathedral of the Deep is an optional area of the game, but if you want to get some nice goodies, it is worth visiting, and it is also critical for a few handy side quests now. Where are those doggos? There's about three of them in here. And they do enjoy making your life hell. kill them like that obviously. And there's also a bunch of hollows. There's one. There's fire arrows. What's that up there? That's just a bit of foliage. I thought that was a, a character. I thought that was an enemy. So let's see. Oh you bastard. I'm about to die. Now I am actually going to change my hood because I don't like this not really knowing what's going on with my health bars and whatnot. So I'm just going to go back in here. So last episode we played with the auto HUD. I'm just going to go back to standard HUD on. There we go. So these crossbow guys, they've got some range on them. Okay, so 
so we'll just take a couple of them out at a distance. There's a doggo there, I think there's a doggo down there as well. Let's just get him over here so we can have some fun. Put you down, boy. You're rabid. Sorry. Oh, you could slip through there. Get that doggy down here as well. To the head for that one. That was uh, very kind of me, wasn't it? Oh, there's there is actually a fourth. No, there is a fourth and indeed a fifth doggy. So what I'm just doing is drawing the doggies over so that they don't attempt to gang up on me while I'm advancing up towards the jerks with the fiery crossbows. Oh, okay. So, I do have a few more arrows. I was... Uh, Went and did a bit of purchasing between videos. Okay. Okay, so that should be all the enemies cleared out of this bit, so now we can go and grab the loots. Got a large Cyril. Big fat nothing. Okay, so that is the first sort of little challenge area really of the cathedrals and now of the cathedral and now we're into the cathedral grounds proper. Where there's a nice enemy type that we're about to meet who likes to greet people. So these guys set fire to themselves and run at you. And they do not stop until they leap at you and they die. But obviously if they leap on you when you're there on fire, then you take a whole bunch of horrible and unpleasant damage. And pretty much most of the hollow enemies in this area will do that. So here we go. We are in the starting area of the Cathedral of the Deep. Which is this chapel area here. Now him, this fella down here. Merciful goddess, mother of the forlorn, who have no please, bear witness to fire for and the ash to kindle flame. Okay. So he probably won't be in your game unless you've bought well he won't be in your game at all unless you bought the DLC. He is the entry point for the first chunk of DLC, The Ashes of Ariandel, which we're not going to go to at all at the moment until we're several levels into the game. Now, you can speak to him and you will be taken to the painted world of Ariandel and um, you can get back, obviously, you can teleport back from there from the first bonfire that you come to. Um, but we're not going to do any of that for the time being. We will leave him to be and we will come back to him at some point. Now, what is my status? What do I need for another level? I need 8,633 souls for another level, so a little way to go yet. Now, this next area has lots of blood dealing enemies, lots of enemies that like to deal bleed because they'll cover you with maggots and the only way to really sort them out is to get a torch onto them. Now I'm also probably going to go to my scythe because it's got a much wider sweep than my um, uh, my pokey spear um, and 
you find lots of groups of enemies in this next area and it's best to get quite a few sweeping attacks in on them so you can do a bit of crowd control. Um, this room has two shortcut entrances that will be opening up over time. There's this one here and one over there. Now this is kind of this is a very sort of loopy intertwining area, um, the Cathedral of the Deep. There's lots of um, paths which join in. It's actually quite a large area. Come on, lay on. Oh, as you can see, if they just clip you, that's not fun times. That well's important, but not yet. We'll come back to it later. Don't let them go flame on. Okay, so we got another Estus shard there, so we can go and reinforce our Estus flask. Um, I'm okay for the time being though. I've redistributed my Estus flask load, so I've got four in each flask. So that should keep my energy bars topped up. Is there anything over here? I don't think so. So these basically, Oh. In fact, it's almost not worth fighting these guys because they do just respawn. Um, there's a couple of looty areas which you can find stuff. Or a great sword. And obviously what you want to be watching out for is their maggot vomit. Which if it gets on to you will start a bleed effect. And the only way or the only really easy way to clear that is to just whip out a torch like that. And if you whip out your torch, so keeping it in one of your um, your other weapon slots, so you can just pull it out. It just literally clears the maggots off there and then. Oh, I'm not sure that was a physically possible thing, just sticking a side into someone like that. But you know, it happened. I don't think there's anything down there. No. Now this area down here, there is loot galore but it's also easy to get swamped with maggot dudes. So what I'm going to do is grab the gear because I believe, yes, we get a new type of maggot dude, which is this guy here. Now these guys will I'll grab you and get up they and they will just maim you out right like that so that happened <laughs> okay Right, well, I'm going to take this opportunity to um, jump back to Firelink and just reinforce my Estus flask up a bit, and I will meet you at the point where my souls died. Okay, here we go. There we go, my souls back. Oh! Get off me! So, the problem with these guys, really, is their numbers. And the fact that being maggoty, horrible arseholes that they are, they are impervious to bleed damage. So I'm not getting the bleed damage in off my scythe, which is mighty annoying. And here we have one of the 
big old ones and there's a few of these nasty buggers around here and down here in fact we have a few giant maggot creatures which are ready to oh he's metamorphosized isn't he which are all ready to grief you just down in that trench there we'll come to them later now I do have a recollection that the maggot creatures are weak to fire so what I might actually do is infuse one of my weapons with fire you know, for the fun of it Would you please? So obviously one of the big things here is just the sheer volume of enemies that just keep respawning. So it's a good idea to just keep moving. But over here, we have this oh. oh god damn it bloody hell I'm going to bring her down here because there's a friend who can help me out. Note the white birch. And the giant arrow is flying around. I have a feeling that our friend the giant actually might have taken out. Spinny knife wielding nutter there. <sighs> Just prevent that poison build up. Would you stop? Oh! So yeah, all good fun. So obviously if we hadn't made friends with the giant bowmen back in the undead settlement, um, we'd be getting skewered by these giant arrows. But thankfully he's, uh, he's a handy friend to have on our side because uh, he's helped us out there. So we've got an undead bone shard that'll strengthen the Estus flask. What? Looks like she might be too quick. No, she's taking damage. Right. Come on. What? Dead. So... There's a couple of those around here, and neither of them are particularly good fun. So, oh. again, like I say, they just keep coming. They just keep a coming. But we are about near our first shortcut of this area, which is down in this direction. I don't think there's any looty items that I need. Nope. Caswell Great Shield. Mm, try to think about how. <laughs> That's funny about the first time that you see it. But here, we can kick this ladder down and we can make our way down this way now that's our first shortcut area of the area opened and there's a couple of options now 
available to us. We're gonna have these big bastards. Ah. So pop my torch out and get rid of all of the maggots that are building up. Just do a little caressing tears on there, just for luck. And up here we have tight night shard and through there is the entrance to the cathedral where we found our first bonfire now. I don't think I can get the door open. It's not here, no. It's from a different angle. There is obviously those two doors next to the bonfire that I showed you. So I can drop down there and I can head to the bonfire or I can clear a little bit more of this lower area out. I obviously do have a few more heals left. It would be quite handy to get some fire on my weapon. Tackle these big buggers. And we obviously then have another crystal lizard over there, which will net us another scale, another titanite scale now. Do I need to attack it to wake it up, or will it wake up of its own accord? Oh, okay, okay. That one spawned through the wall and I lost it. I'll come back. I'll come back to it. Don't you worry. So yeah, like I say, Cathedral of the Deep is quite a big area and this is really just the start of it. There is a whole area on the rooftops which leads into a whole big area on the inside of the cathedral before we finally come to the boss which, if you know your law, you know isn't who it's supposed to be. Die! So obviously we've come here looking for Aldrich. What we'll instead find someone else. Come on then. Maggots off me. Stop the poison build up. And back. I mean, there is a certain rhythm to this game. There is a certain. Uh, once you start to get your loadouts and your items that you're. that you're happy with. Yeah. You start to, yeah, missed. Get to a point where you have a rhythm to your combat flow that you start to know how your weapons work, 
when to switch between them when to switch to your secondary weapons and it, it's I think one of the things that it takes a while hello that's a new charm it takes a while to uh, to actually kind of get used to in this series but once it clicks it's very satisfying so we've got our shortcut open up there let's go and check out some of the gear what we found and what I am going to do because the last couple of times I've been to this bonfire Gale over here has just very annoying he's just he's, he won't shut up so I may let him take me off to Ariandel and we can just get that area open just so he'll go away he's, he's, a, he's a bit of a a chatty one that one so head back off to Firelink Shrine and um, what we're going to do is I think I may go and infuse either my scythe or my Uchigatana, it might be my scythe, with fire. So we're going to have a chat with uh, Andre. Ah, Sup Andre? Good to see you and good what needs. Nothing, well, I haven't got any shards now. Okay, what we're going to do is find my scythe. I'm going to infuse it with the fire gem that we got off the fire demon in the undead settlement. Now what that's going to do is it's going to take off all of the attribute bonuses that um, we had on it. So it won't scale on my skill anymore. Um, but what it will do, or my dexterity rather, sorry skills are bloodborne thing. It won't scale on my dexterity or strength anymore. But what it will do is it will have a base fire damage which can obviously then we can upgrade further with uh, titanite so I, think my, I seem to remember my scythe was doing slightly less damage than my uchi but I did like the scythe's moveset a bit more than the uchi hmm mm, choices choices Although the Uchi scales down to do slightly less damage on fire, so I give myself a fire great size. So that's going to deal fire damage now. All good fun. Pretty be careful, don't. What sort of what sort of titanite do I have? Okay, what kind of reinforce? So what does the size reinforce on? So. Yeah, so that still reinforces on standard Titanite shards. Um, need six of them to push that up to a plus three fire scythe. And my spear requires Titanite scales, which would get off those big crystal lizards. So I would need another two of those to push it up to a plus two. I can put the Uchigatana up to near enough 200 physical damage. I'm not going to commit to anything just yet. Yeah, I'll be alright, I'll be alright, mate. I'm not going to commit to anything just yet. We'll see how we go now. What I'm going to do, let's have a look at that charm, shall we? So, what was it? It was this. So what do I need? I need 18... And that's not so good of a spell buff. In fact, that's not as good as the Saint's Talisman, really. The Belvine. Huh. Temporarily increase poise while casting miracles, preventing enemy attacks from interrupting prayer. Works well equipped in either hand. Recovers HP. Oh, so the bell vine will give me HP recovery. 
but very slowly. So I think I'm all right without that. I will just stick with my current loadout of miracles. Now, I am going to go and level up a little bit, get some levels in, and we'll see you in the next episode. Farewell, chums. <laughs>